Welcome to Encompass Live. I'm Emily Nimsicott, filling in for your regular host, Krista Burns. Encompass Live is the Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event. We cover NLC activities and other library-related topics, and they are presented by NLC staff and guests. The free one-hour sessions are offered every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time and include a mixture of presentations, interviews, book reviews, web tours, mini training sessions, and Q&A sessions. Today we have Susan Nicely here to talk about Discount Shopping with the Nebraska Library Commission. Thank you, Emily, and hello, everyone. Um, as Emily said, uh, my name is Susan Nisley, and I'm the online services librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, I'm going to talk today about the discount um, purchasing programs, discount programs available through the Nebraska Library Commission. And I wanted to start with our mission, just because I think that the discount program really does fit in with our mission. Um, the mission of the Library Commission is statewide promotion, development, and coordination of library and information services. And we also serve as an advocate for the library and information service needs of all Nebraskans. So when you think about it, um, one of the biggest challenges faced by libraries throughout the state um, is funding, tight budgets, um, having to um, try to get as much as you can for as little as possible um, since budgets are very uh, tight these days. And so uh, what we at the Commission try to do um, is facilitate that. Um, anything that we can do here to try to make uh, libraries uh, and librarians' jobs easier and librarian, libraries in the state um, better able to meet the needs of citizens, um, that's what we want to be helping with. So um, the discount program does fit in very closely with our mission, I believe. Um, there are really uh, three parts to our discount purchasing program. Um, there are discounts on databases and e-resources. And um, this is probably the most uh, widely known uh, component of our discount program. Um, people, uh, many people take advantage of it. Many libraries take advantage of it. Um, we also provide discounts on books and supplies, and that is something that I don't think quite as many libraries are maybe aware of, and also on conferences. And so I do want to, um, especially for people who are new to Nebraska who might be listening to this recording, I want to provide some background information on the discount, uh, da uh, the database discount program, but I also want to take, an opportun take this opportunity to publicize um, our discounts on books and supplies and our discounts on conferences. Um, this uh, uh, page just shows you uh, our discounts on databases and e-resources index page. And so I am going to go ahead and switch out to that page so I can actually show it to you live here. Um, this is the page where we list all of the um, database discounts that we have available. Uh, the page, as you can see, is alphabetical. And we try to uh, cross-reference products not only by vendor name, but also by uh, specific database or resource name. So hopefully, however you're thinking about the product, whether you're thinking, um, are there discounts on EBSCO databases? Um, we'll have EBSCO listed uh, in the E section. Or maybe you're thinking about a specific EBSCO database. We'll also have um, databases listed by specific product names. So there are a couple of ways you can use this list. Um, this list is uh, probably um, primarily of interest to um, librarians who may be uh, new to the state, who want to get an overview of which products we have some sort of uh, deal with, which vendors we already have a working relationship with. This is a great place to come to see what some of the options are. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and jump quickly into one of the pages, just so you can get a sense of what type of information you'll be able to find online. So I'm going to go ahead and click on um, 
Columbia University Press. And you'll see here, not only is the vendor listed, but also some of the specific database products. Um, in this case, they're clumped together since they um, typically use uh, the name Columbia at the beginning of the product name, but that's not always the case. So. Just going in to look, um, when we um, have a particular uh, deal with a vendor, we'll provide uh, descriptive information on uh, the databases that are included in the program. Uh, in this case, we do have pricing that we put up on our website. Um, we don't always uh, put pricing up because not all vendors want their discounted pricing uh, available on the open web for their competitors to see. Um, in this particular case, it was okay with Columbia, so we do have the pricing listed. You can see that they offer Nebraska Libraries a 20% discount, I believe, off of list price. Yeah, 20% discount off of list price. Um, when I can, I do try to uh, include the list price as well, so you just have a sense of um, what the discount is. Uh, scrolling down towards the bottom of the page, you will have um, more detailed information such as what the subscription term is, um, if there are order deadlines, uh, you'll have links to order forms, licensing agreements, um, instructions for how to proceed uh, with an order for the product, uh, information on how you can request a trial on a product if we're not um, sponsoring a statewide trial on it, but you'd like to try it out before you um, consider ordering it. We'll have that information, tech support. So that's pretty typical of what you'll find on one of our pricing pages. Okay, here we go. We're back in our slideshow. And did I lose? Did I lose a little window for? There no, we go. We're here. Okay. okay. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about how uh, the database discounts work. Um, many times a vendor will offer us a straight percentage off discount. For instance, Columbia University Press offered us a 20% discount off of list price. Uh, Facts on File offered us a 10% discount off of list price. And then some database vendors such as SIRS will actually construct a pricing that's really um, customized for our, our particular uh, constituents. Uh, we have a lot of small K-12 school, schools in the state, um, more than in other states, and so their typical pricing uh, didn't really uh, lend itself to being affordable for our small schools, and so they did come up with a special pricing for K-12 uh, libraries with fewer than 300 students. That's something that you won't find offered in a lot of other states, so in that case it's really unique to us here in Nebraska. Um, sometimes uh, we uh, work directly with a vendor and we have a deal with them that they have made specifically with us. Um, other times vendors will offer the same discount through a lot of different library networks and consortia in the United States. Um, and Columbia University Press, I believe, is an example of that, Oxford University Press. So they will um, approach many different library networks and they have a discount that they're willing to offer and it's the same for all uh, networks. So um, some of them are really customized for Nebraska and others they're going to be sort of generic for all uh, different library networks across the United States. So uh, sometimes we have a little bit more flexibility um, with uh, some discounts than we do some of those other um, more widespread discounts. Um, we also often have uh, situations where a vendor agrees to offer us a discount, but it, the discount amount is contingent on the number of libraries that we're able to get to uh, subscribe to a particular product. 
And those are a little bit um, more tedious uh, to put together. Um, EBSCO is a good example of this. Um, EBSCO will often offer database trials in the spring and the fall. We make those trials um, of specific products available to all Nebraska libraries. But then what they do is they will say, um, we'll offer you this discounted pricing as long as we have five uh, new subscriptions as a result of this trial. So that means a library um, that's never subscribed to an EBSCO product subscribes to one of the products featured in the trial, or that a uh, library that subscribes to EBSCO products subscribes to a new product as a result of the trial. So those are a little bit difficult because we don't always know um, whether we're going to get the discount until after we find out who's interested. Um, sometimes the discount changes depending on how many libraries um, are interested. And so we have to do a little back and forth negotiating, double checking with libraries to see if they're still interested based on the price we're able to achieve. Um, so that's something that we do in both the spring and the fall with EBSCO. And um, we go through similar processes with some other um, vendors. So those discounts are a little bit more, um, they're not a quite as straightforward or clear cut um, as some of our other ones. Uh, finally, we also do cooperate with other library networks. Um, this is nice in situations where another network um, has a deal already set up with a vendor. Um, some of these networks uh, serve more than one state. For example, <clears throat> BCR serves Colorado and a number of other states surrounding Colorado. Uh, Lyricist, which used to be Solonet, um, serves a lot of states. Um, started out in the southeast and now it, it extends up the eastern uh, coast. So um, some of these uh, other networks, they have so many libraries that are members that they are able to get bigger discounts than we might be able to based on the number of libraries we in Nebraska could bring to the table. So it works out really well for us to piggyback with them on their deals. Um, sometimes we don't have quite as much control in these situations. For instance, the subscription term might vary uh, from what we typically use. Um, there's a little bit of back and forth, um, you know, making sure that our members are going to be able to uh, get on board with those discounts, but it also brings a lot of benefits to our members, especially if there's a product that maybe one or two libraries in Nebraska are interested in. Um, we don't really have enough libraries to bring together to get a good discount, but if we piggyback with another state or network, um, it benefits us, and it may also benefit the other state because it may bump their numbers up a little bit more so that they can get a bigger discount. So. Uh, we try to do uh, whatever we can to arrange database discounts. Um, a little bit more about the database discounts that we coordinate. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when we were looking at pricing for Columbia University Press products, um, we will publish pricing to the website if the vendor allows it. Um, if not, you'll usually see a note there that says, um, please contact us for pricing and we'll include an email address, phone number for you to use to get in touch with. Um, it's usually me or Jeanette Powell who can provide you with pricing. Um, one of the things that we do um, in conjunction with the database discounts is we do do centralized billing um, for vendors if more than one library subscribes. And that's something that we can do here um, that benefits the vendor so that will sometimes make them more willing to provide a discount to our library since we're saving them some work. Um, what that means is the vendor only has to invoice the Nebraska Library Commission for the total amount of the subscriptions entered into by our libraries, and then we in turn uh, will pay the vendor directly. So they only have to worry about one uh, financial transaction. Uh, what we do then is we turn around and we in invoice the individual libraries, and then the libraries pay um, us for the products. 
And that does give libraries a little bit more flexibility. Sometimes libraries want to pay for a product right away, so we can sometimes invoice them early. Or maybe they need to wait a month, uh, maybe a little bit longer than the vendor would like. And we can often accommodate that, whereas the vendor might not be so willing. So, so it does make things a little bit more flexible for our libraries. Uh, one of the things we do to try to make this more manageable, however, is we do try to keep the subscriptions on standard terms. And so we usually work with uh, two terms. Our uh, preference has always been July 1st through June 30th, um, but we also have set up some subscriptions to run January 1st through December 31st. Um, this just streams, streamlines the process on our end so we know when to start looking for uh, the renewal process to start. Um, it um, keeps the billing uh, so that it doesn't occur throughout the year, hopefully. Um, for, for the sake of Doreen, our business manager, who does it all. Um, so you will see that we are often, um, the discounts do um, require a July 1st to June 30th term or a January 1st through December 31st term. Uh, sometimes we do have libraries that are interested in subscribing midterm. And many times it is possible to get a prorated pro midterm subscription. We'll just set it up so that it starts um, the, the next month and then it runs until the end of the term, June 30th or December 31st. And then we get that library on the cycle with the other libraries that are also uh, participating in that particular deal. So that is something that um, you will notice. Finally, I um, just want to point out um, and this is something that we can do because we are a state library agency as opposed to um, a nonprofit network uh, or consortia like some of the other networks that uh, cover other parts of the country. We are able to pass the entire discount on to libraries and this sometimes surprises vendors because they're used to working with uh, networks that they're not trying to make a profit but they do have to cover their expenses and so um, oftentimes vendors will say, well, okay, we're going to provide um, a 10% discount. Um, the library can get 5% and then the network can keep 5%. In those cases, um, we will pass the entire 10% discount on to the library. And so that's something that we can do um, because we are a state agency and we're not, um, we're not trying to raise any money to cover our own expenses as a result of these deals that we're arranging. We're really able to do it because it fits our mission and it helps us um, accomplish our goal of making things easier for libraries. Um, before we move on, I just want to check and uh, see if there are any questions. Um, If anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask them or uh, type your question in the question box. Yeah, we do have um, your microphones muted right now if you have one. So if you want to ask your question over the microphone, go ahead and click the raise your hand icon and we'll see that you have a question that way. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and go on for now and I'll check back for questions later. Um, the next uh, component of our discount program I want to talk about is our discounts on books and supplies. Um, as I said, I don't think that as many people are aware of these discounts as um, are aware of our discounts on databases, and so that's something I definitely did want to promote today. Um, I'm going to go back uh, to our page uh, that shows you the list of databases that we offer discounts on, and I just want to point out at the top of this page, we do have shortcuts to our other discount uh, programs. So um, you've got discounts on books and supplies up here and discounts on conferences. So those are shortcuts. Um, you can always get to the other two um, portions of our discount program. So I'm going to click on discounts on uh, books and supplies. And then you'll just notice at the top of this page, you have links back to the discounts on databases and links to discounts on conferences. So we do try to um, keep it sort of circular so you can get to the other discounts as well. 
Um, these discounts um, are with uh, usually uh, library supply um, vendors and book jobbers. Um, oftentimes, uh, the way these come about is the, um, the book jobber or the supply vendor will approach us at the Library Commission and ask um, if they can, through us, um, promote a discount for, they often call it for your member libraries, and so we consider any library in Nebraska a member. Um, you don't have to go through any formal process to be considered a member. So sometimes, uh, sometimes the wording the vendors use sounds a little bit funny just in terms of how we do things here in Nebraska, but anyway, um, you're all members of the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, so uh, one of the, th the reasons vendors do this is because we, they, they know that we do have um, streamlined ways of communicating easily and quickly with all the libraries in the state. And so it's a good way for them to get word out about their product and promote their product by offering a discount. Um, they know then that we will publicize it um, through our um, mailing list, through our blog, uh, through other publications. So um, for them, that, uh, that, um, that reach uh, makes it worth them offering a discount. The one way in which the um, discount on books and supplies program differs a bit from the database program is that transactions usually occur directly between the library and the vendor. So we have information about the discounts listed on this page, um, but then uh, the library contacts the book jobber or the um, supplier directly to make their uh, purchases. Um, this is fine. The only downside is that we don't always know um, which of these uh, discounts is being used unless someone has a problem um, and they contact us about it. We don't necessarily know if, um, you know, one of the vendors is um, not living up to the terms of their discounts that they offer. So um, if you do ever have problems, um, be sure to let us know. Um, the other thing to be aware of is that often uh, these uh, vendors or book suppliers will provide a particular, what they call a discount or promotional code. Um, and so that is something that uh, you have to take note of on this page. And then you will uh, have to uh, mention that discount code or type it into the website so that you'll get the discount. Um, often um, there'll be sales and promotions that um, these uh, vendors are offering. And most of the time, I think, in all cases, they will give you whichever discount is more. If they're having a promotion on a product and that discount is more than the discount they offer through us, they'll give you the sale price. So that's something just to watch out for, but I think that they're all pretty good about trying to get you the best price. Um, many of these discounts um, have to be, quote, unquote, renewed on an annual basis. Um, basically, that just means... Um, we contact the vendor or they contact us and say, okay, here's the new code for the next year. Um, all the terms are the same or we're going to make these slight variations in the terms. So um, occasionally, um, you know, one of those will get away from us and then a library will call and say, oh, this looks like it's uh, expired. Can you renew it? And so we always do that quickly. We try to stay on top of that. Um, other discounts were presented several years ago and they didn't have an expiration date and so they're still up there and so um, in those cases um, you know there hasn't necessarily been any change for several years. Um, I mentioned the fact that we often uh, don't know uh, which of these discounts are being used uh, and what people's experiences are. Um, some of you may have seen that I posted a message to the trial mailing list a couple weeks ago um, asking for feedback, asking librarians to let me know which of the discounts on books and supplies they used and what their experience was like. And I actually got 21 responses, which to me is very good. Um, I'm sure there are many more than 21 libraries out there that take advantage of it, but the fact that 21 people took the time out to respond to me um, I thought that was a good representative response. It lets me know that people are using it 
And so just, uh, just out of, uh, to, to um, give people an idea of which uh, discounts are being used, I just tallied what people told me. And you'll see um, lots of the libraries who responded said they used Highsmith, Demco, and some uh, librarians actually indicated what they uh, purchased through the particular supplier, so barcodes, card pockets, spine labels, label protectors, etc. Um, I specifically want to point out the Ingram um, discount. That's pretty significant. It can be um, the percentage discount varies on type of books, but it can be up to 41.5%. So um, we do have a number of libraries that use that um, Ingram discount in order to save money on books. Um, we also have uh, some libraries that take advantage of software choice, uh, which is a discount that's actually uh, arranged by the Nebraska Department of Education. But um, libraries and schools can get um, discounts on software, antivirus software, Microsoft products, etc. So um, you can see a good representative sample of what some of our libraries are taking advantage of. The final discount I want to mention is discounts on conferences. Um, every year, um, for as long as I've been here, we've been offering discounts on Information Today conferences. Um, this is something that Information Today, this is an opportunity that Information Today makes available to many different library networks and consortia across the country. And again, they're always talking about members. You can make this you can make these discounts available to your members, and then they say you can consider members as broadly as you wish. And so um, every year we will put up information about discounts on computer and in, in libraries, our registration fees, internet librarian, and web search university. So you can pretty much be sure that there's going to be a discount um, on our website about these three conferences. And uh, the registration fees are discounted over 50%. So if you're ever going to go to one of these conferences, it's definitely worth going through us. Now again, um, what Information Today asks in return um, is that we collect all the registrations and then send them in as one batch. So again, that's an easy thing for us to do. And if, if that's all it takes for us to save you 50% on the registration, we're more than happy to do it. So I just want you to all be aware that those conference discounts are always available as well. Um, this final page just provides you with um, URLs of uh, maybe different cases. Also, I thought the two primary ways we can pay libraries in the state about this count. The first one is the trial mailing list. Um, if you're not a member of the trial mailing list, I would strongly encourage you to join that mailing list or make sure someone on your library is a member. That is where we will announce database trials. For instance, if Edge is going to trials on database and try to get grouped together for a discount, that information is going to go out over the trial mailing list. Um, after the trial has been in progress, um, that's where I will ask libraries if they're interested in possibly being part of a group and getting discounted pricing on one of those databases. And so that's where the back and forth goes on. You know, we have enough libraries to get the discount, or no, we don't. Are you still interested at in this other price? Um, we'll also post information to the Encompass blog um, if we have a new discount available or a new trial. So those are the two primary places where you'll see information. Um, but again, I'd say the trial mailing list is the, the first and foremost where that kind of information is going to get posted. Um, that is a good overview, I think, of our discount programs. Um, that's all I have formally prepared to talk about today, but I'm more than happy to answer questions if you have them. Um, go ahead and, as I said, just uh, feel free to type questions in or raise your hand and I can unmute you. Okay, well, if we don't have any questions, I think we're going to finish a little bit early today. Um, hope everyone has a happy holiday, and uh, by all means, stay safe driving. So um, thanks for joining us today.